navigating the home buying process. We value the experience of our agents at Boston Connect Real Estate so much that not only will you hear my perspective on real estate topics, occasionally you will hear the expert thoughts and opinions of our experienced agents at Boston Connect Real Estate. Be a part of our roundtable. If you have any questions during the show, please call 781-837-4900. We'd love to talk real estate. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and wherever you'd like to listen to podcasts at Talk Real Estate Roundtable. If you would like a one-on-one -on -one consultation with David, me and my David's team to discuss you your real I. estate <laughs> needs, you can connect with me at bostonconnect.com or 781-826-8000. Now, sit back, relax, take good notes, and let's talk real estate. And hello to all my South Shore neighbors. You are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. My name is Melissa Wallace, and I am joined by two very special guests today, <laughs> special co-hosts today. And you can probably recognize them just by their voices. <laughs> we're on for And this one's already laughing at me because, okay. and, and, okay, so Tracy Grady is here. Uh, she's a full-time realtor here at Boston Connect Real Estate with her husband, Jim. They make the Grady team, and she's already laughing because uh, she said, David, um, poor David, he doesn't know what it's like to do a show with Tracy and I. <laughs> so um, we we tend to just do whatever we want to do. We, t we tend to say we whatever we want to say. We, <laughs> we, we digress. We, we really don't ever have an agenda <laughs> when we do it. And it's usually where we just come in here and we're like, yeah, we're fine. We, we do it. We've done it a million times. So we, we get this. We get this. So. We can talk all day long, the two of us. So yeah. I'm easy. I'm just casual. Just because there's a microphone in front of us doesn't make any difference difference at yeah. all <laughs> and we're just like oh yeah i forgot we're we're live on air oh, yeah, yeah. We, get, well, oh, yeah. we should probably talk about we should probably talk about real, real estate, estate. <laughs> <laughs> um but yes so we also have david tortelot here today he is from homestead mortgage and i feel like the watd world knows who you are um but why don't you reintroduce yourselves to all of our listeners all right well thanks for having me good to meet you tracy nice and to good meet to you be david with melissa so Dave toured a lot, Homestead Mortgage. Yeah, I, I'm on, I run some ads on WATD, so I'm sure most folks have heard this voice before. Probably sick of it. Um, <laughs> all I do is reverse mortgages. That's my thing. Uh, I don't do forward mortgages. I don't do any other form of finance, just reverses and have been for the past 19 years. Something I'm very passionate about, and that's because I took a lot of time back in 2004 to learn about it. I studied the HUD manual. So today we're gonna talk about that. I'm also certified. There's um, a designation we have in our industry, CRMP. It's a trademarked and registered designation that was put in place by our trade association and our MLA, which is National Reverse Mortgage Lenders Association. And so there's uh, just over 200 CRMPs in the entire country. Oh. And so there's not a lot of not us that lot. have that certification. It's been around since 2009, and it's available for anybody to get. It's not easy to get, and you have to meet certain criteria. So. Uh, with that being said, I, you know, I think the biggest thing, and I'll just sort of define for you ladies what a reverse mortgage is. is as I'm we gonna, discussed, we need to have that. Yeah, yeah. As we every, discussed, yeah. This is my first <laughs> foray into reverse mortgages because I've yeah. never worked with anybody who's done one and I've never really understood them. Yeah. So this is great for me this because I have for you. <laughs> this is perfect for me because I absolutely. And, and honestly, perfect for me too. <laughs> because, <laughs> like I said, you, we, you're so good at explaining what they are. And then Sharon and I were like, oh, yeah, like we I remember it from this the last now. time. Yeah, this is great. This is great. And then we walk away and we're like, like, huh? And then the other day, <laughs> so we were, we were asking um, me to do the show. Sharon has an open house this morning. Um, and so she was like, oh, do you want to see if Tracy wants to do the show with you and David on, on Saturday? And I was like, yeah, sure. And we're like trying to explain it to her. And she's like, <laughs> looking at us cross-eyed we're like no you, no it has to be a, a primary and then she's like well what's the age and like we just kept going on we're like oh don't worry we'll ask we'll david, david. Thank god david's coming back thank god david's coming you back you understand it after you sit here and talk to you it's yeah. kind of like doing algebra like if you sit and you walk me through algebra i can do it the minute i step away from the table i'm like i have absolutely no idea yeah, you gotta what, what you i did. did i have no idea how i did that so yeah, i got it so. so i'll give you the formal definition and it's a hud yeah regulated loan and sort of um, insured by FHA, Federal Housing Administration. So HUD's definition is it's a, it's a mortgage for people 62 and older that allows them to tap into the equity in their house, some of it, and turn, via a mortgage, mm -hmm. and then turn that into cash flow streams or okay. lump sum sums of money streams, things like that. 
my my personal definition is that it's it's a way that um, allows you to turn some of the wealth in your house via a mortgage into cash. Oh. And that's essentially what it mm. does. It mm -hmm. unlocks the wealth <laughs> tied up in your house. So do other mortgages. But when you take out cash, so if you take out, out a house, second, if you take out yeah. a second mortgage on your house, right. what would be the difference between what would or why would you do a reverse mortgage as opposed to taking out a second mortgage? Yeah, and that's why there's an age minimum of 62 and older. So anybody less than 62 cannot apply for a reverse mortgage. So it was designed for people that are essentially retired, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> and they have had a house for a long time. And as we know, when you have a house a long time, what does it do? It goes up in value. Yep. And if you had a mortgage when you took it out for a long time, you paid that down. Right. In the form of, I call it deposits or payments. Well, and technically, so, I'm probably the perfect per I mean, my husband's 65. Yeah. We've owned our house for 24 years, and it, it has gone. Yeah. We bought it in 1999 for, well, because I'm pretty transparent, for like $399,000. Yeah. It's a 3,000 square foot colonial. So it's now three times worth what it is yeah what it was when we bought it right. so great so, for us but yeah and so the wealth that you have in that house yep. builds up over time and so when we're in our 60s 62 or older um there's a statistic in here somewhere one of these stats that i wrote down is that if you take the average household nationwide 60 and older uh you take their net worth their wealth what they have in savings and their real estate two-thirds of that wealth is in real estate Usually in their yep. primary residence home. What the other third is in what they've saved. So it's hard to not consider housing wealth when you get to retirement. The challenge is people don't even want to take the time to learn about this. Yeah. If they did, millions of seniors would have reverse mortgages. If I think everybody knew I what think I there know. is a stigmatism yeah. with reverse mortgages. Like yeah. I said to you, not to be insulting at all. Yeah. My husband was like, Well, you know, years ago they were kind of considered a, a scam type of a thing. Yeah. But it sounds, to, just talking to you this morning, that it's come a long way since it the has. original product that came out. Yeah, the pro I'll just go back. So the old versus the new, right? In the 60s and 70s, there were reverse mortgages that were bank reverse mortgages. So the banks came up with their own loans and their own rules and their own costs. And so it wasn't Thanks. until the late 80s, and that's where all the stigmas were because the rules were all over the place. The costs were all over the place. There was sharing of the home when the person passed away. So that was that misconception where you hear, oh, the bank takes over the house at the end. Well, they didn't take over the house. They shared in the equity. So it wasn't until the mid to late 80s during the Reagan administration, they looked at that product and said, mm -hmm. we like the looks of that. Let's retool it on a federal level, regulate it on the federal level, and we'll offer it to lenders with our manual and our rule book. And so 96% of the reverse mortgages taken out today, it's the HUD reverse mortgage. Yeah. So this one was designed and enacted into law through Congress in 1987. So it's oh. been, so yeah, into law through Congress. So when you say that, you say, all right, how can that be a scam? Yeah, can't, yeah. Right, and still lasts 36 years later. Yeah. So, but that doesn't mean even this product didn't have its challenges because when HUD released it to the lenders and said, hey, here's a new program you can offer to your 62 plus customers. Yep. They just have to, you know, they have to have equity in the house, has to be their primary mm -hmm. residence. Mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. like, primary can't residence. be a second home or investment <clears throat> property. And so, and it just allows them to tap into the wealth in that house and either supplement their retirement through an income stream, pay off an existing mortgage to stop the payment that they had on the mortgage they just paid off. Yep. It's a cash flow play. So and is so, it? So as I was saying before, we have, Jim and I have clients that are, um, we have a couple of them at, in a position where they probably don't even have a mortgage on their house anymore, but their house is too big for them. So they right. want to sell it. But it doesn't make them a great buyer because they still have the contingency <clears throat> of selling, selling their house. Yeah. Is this a product for them? Um, there's two, it's two, you use it two separate ways. You know, when you buy a house, you take a mortgage mm -hmm. out like mm -hmm. Melissa did, and she put a down payment down. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then at some point in the future, Melissa can refinance her house she's living in. Yep. So you can take out a reverse mortgage to refinance your house, the one you're living in, against that. Or you can sell that house, take your net proceeds, use some of it as a deposit, and mortgage, a purchase mortgage for, um, for the next house you're buying. So you can take a mortgage out when you're purchasing a new house as well. Okay. So it's, it's two separate things. Okay. So if they were... 
you're saying they have a contingency to sell. Yeah, they have to sell their house. They find a condo to get that the they money for the down payment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So one because of the... they don't want to have another more. I mean, they, more than likely they could probably pay cash for it. Yeah. But the fact that they have that contingency to sell doesn't make them the best buyer on the table, right? So to say, because they're going to be because it's such a competitive market right now that there's so many people that are vying for condos. Say you have six offers on your table. If you have somebody that doesn't have something to sell, they're going to yeah. be, you know, that's just as a seller that you're going to recommend that that's probably the best buyer for you. Yeah. As opposed to somebody who still has to sell their house in order to do that. So yeah, it wouldn't help them as far as getting rid of a contingency because they'd have to take the reverse out on that house. Okay. In so, which case they still have to sell it. They still have to sell. Yeah. You know? They still have to sell it. But they, I mean, have you talked to them about maybe selling it and renting somewhere? Yeah. So they have, they don't want to, that's they, too risky for them. It's two different. I have two different clients. One, I think it would just be overwhelming for them to yeah. try to pack up, move someplace temporarily, then find something to buy and, and do it. Mm -hmm. it. It would be better for it to be seamless. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, that's definitely an option for them. Yeah. I mean, you'd have to sell the house, pack everything up, put it, find a place for them, I would say furnished so that you're not unpacking mm -hmm. and then repacking to go someplace else when you find your forever home type yeah. thing. I'll tell so. you how a reverse mortgage for purchasing the next house you find for them yep. could benefit them. Oh. So let's say they're selling their house, yep. whatever their net proceeds are. Yep. Have you done that exercise? Do you know what they're roughly walking away with? Yeah, well, <clears throat> I would say in the high, I mean, they're, both of the houses are lovely. They're, they're both million-dollar homes, Okay. and they really don't owe a lot. Okay. Yeah, it's either nothing or a very small amount they owe on it. All right, so, and so they could take so the net proceeds, yep. use some of it, not all of it, to buy it cash, right? And yep. follow me on this yep. so they can... They could essentially buy it cash, right? Put they all could. that money into right. the house and have no mortgage payment. Right. Or they could use some of the money as a down payment and mortgage the next house with a reverse mortgage, and there's no payment on that either. Oh. So they get the benefit of still having no payment, but because they finance some of the next house, yep. they get to keep a lot more of their net proceeds and put it in the bank to live on. So there's value there. There's a lot of value there. Yeah. yeah. Instead of taking all your money, <clears throat> dumping it in a house, which is no longer liquid, just yeah. to accomplish not having a mortgage payment, they can take some of that money, put it in the bank, just take the other portion of it for down payment and mortgage the rest. Oh, And yeah. have no mortgage payment. You have a mortgage. You have a mortgage, but it's... And it goes up with accrued interest. And right. that's, you know, that's the con of a reverse mortgage. The balance <laughs> goes up. The balance goes up. But if they're going to stay there long term... Yeah. And the, you know, I mean, I would think at this point there would be this, yeah. wherever they're going is going to be there for where, where their yeah. forever is going to be. They're not, mm -hmm. they're not mm -hmm. going to want to move again. Nobody wants to move it the first time. So you can do it to yeah. refinance. <laughs> you can use it to purchase a house as well. But um, that's really good. Just going back to this product today, yeah. that the home equity conversion mortgage, that's what HUD's formal name is, H-E-C-M. If you go online and Google it, everybody calls it a HECM, oh. right? And so... It's, it's, it's basically how it works is when you apply for a regular mortgage, and Melissa knows this, mm -hmm. you had to supply your tax return, yeah. your W-2s and all that. Yeah. And the amount you qualified for was based on your credit score and your income. Yeah. That loan that you borrowed. Mm -hmm. In my world, it's based on your age and the appraised value, not the income. Oh. So the older you are, the more you can borrow. So if you're 90 and have a $500,000 house, you can borrow about 65% of that value. If you're 62, you're down around 38 to 40 percent. Because again, the interest accrues. Mm -hmm. And if you're 62, you have more years mm -hmm. for the loan balance to grow. And HUD doesn't want the loan balance to exceed the value. Right. So you always want to stay below the... Yeah. If that still could happen, they could be wrong. And that's why these loans are protected by a non-recourse feature, which is just upfront insurance money, upfront MIP. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that goes into a pool at FHA. And the FHA makes the lenders whole using the money out of there if homes come back upside down. Yeah. If people outlive the loan. The oh, kids okay. don't pay for that. There's no deficiency judgment yeah. against them, you yeah. know, after the estate is cleared. It's just, um, it's a non-recourse loan, which just really means the borrower, the estate, and the lender are not liable for the debt period. Mm -hmm. Zero liability. If there's money left when the kids sell the house, that goes to the kids. Okay. So they get the good with the bad. So if the parents pass away and they sell it for more than what the loan balance is that they're paying off, the reverse mortgage, yep. they get the difference. Okay. There's no sharing of that equity, and the house is not owned by the bank down the road.
a lot of people think that the bank owns the house. Yeah, yeah. I think everybody thinks that, and to be honest not. with so, you. Okay. So there's a minimum age, primary home. Yep. Okay. And you got to have, I would say in this market, you got to have around 50% equity. So you value, if you have a $500,000 house with a 250 mortgage, you could still probably do it depending on your age and just refinance that mortgage with a reverse mortgage. Okay. But you're eliminating the payment that you were making. Right. Because a reverse mortgage comes in play, replaces that, has no payment. Right. So if you had a $1,500 a month payment that we refinanced. Don't we all wish we had a $1,500 month payment? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Now you have $1,500. <laughs> you just that up, David. That, that number is just people like, people still have a $1,500. I Usually so. my clients do yeah. because they have small mortgages. Mm -hmm. they, yeah. Mm -hmm. they might have a home equity yeah. line or an old yeah. first mortgage with you know 90000 left on it. But I have had people that you know have had twenty five, three thousand dollar month mortgage payments in yep. their sixties and seventies, mm. and that's why they're doing the reverse. They don't want to be strapped to the payment anymore. Yeah. So they just replace yeah. it with a reverse, and they know that because they're not making a payment, the reverse balance is growing. Okay. So when you have a regular mortgage and we make payments, your mm -hmm. balance goes down. Yeah. Yours is going down like this much right now. <laughs> it, you can't but, even tell at this point. Yeah. But in 10 years, 10 years. Don't you love that page when years. they give you that, that three-page thing where it shows you yeah. what you're Yeah, uh, I'm at my closing. I'm like <laughs> flipping the page. Okay, so and how many pages am I paying yeah. in mortgage year, up? 2070, I will. <laughs> oh, yeah. You borrow 300, and if you keep it for 30 years, you'll pay back 475 yeah. or something mm -hmm. like that you know, on the truth and lending. So yeah. anyways, that's that's – it's not a scam. No. It's not. It's, <laughs> it's not. David's I like, know, so I promise. I promise. It's I'm not, not a scam. scam. Yeah. It's not but a scam. But I appreciate the fact that you understood where I was coming from, no. that a lot of people. I thought the same things in 2004, yeah. prior to me yeah. getting into the business. Since people were asking me, Dave, do you also do reverse mortgages? Because I did regular mortgages back then. Okay. I was just going to ask you that. I don't know if I've asked you that before, but yeah. had you done um, other mortgages before? I got in the business to mortgage. do those first in yeah. 2002. And, and then you just loved reverse mortgages so well, I much. Got a, you just, you just, I went just couldn't get away. I just couldn't get well, away. Well, what happened was I got approached by several people. I kept saying, no, I don't know enough about them. Stay away from them. Yeah. And I, I'm, you know, I've heard, yeah. haven't heard good things about them. Yeah. And then I finally picked up the book because I, I approached by 10, 12, 15 people. Yeah. And by that time, it's like, huh? you keep saying no to yeah. something you know nothing about. Yeah. So I started reading the manual. I stumbled on my first reverse mortgage, put it in place, my second one. And I started to see something different with reverse mortgages versus forward mortgages. I started to see an amazing amount of value that it added to the client. Huge difference. Well, yeah, the I mean. Cash flow swing in their favor, um, allowed them to stay in the house they grew up in, whatever the case may be. Yep. And that really resonated with me. So mm -hmm. I started to say, wow, this thing really makes a it has huge some value. Difference. It really it makes, makes a big, yeah. and it, you know, it kind of tugs at your heart, right? Yeah. With that age group. So. And the rest is history. I think I stopped doing my first, my last forward mortgage was in 2009. Oh. And since then, it was all reverse mortgages. It's all reverse yeah. mortgages. Mm -hmm. I was just more passionate about it. Yeah. You know? Well, you understand it, which is yeah. the key. <laughs> Half the battle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the key to, yeah. to doing them. Um, for all of our listeners, you are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. My name is Melissa Wallace. I'm here with Tracy Grady, who is a full time realtor here at Boston Connect Real Estate, and with David Tortolot from Homestead Mortgage. We're talking reverse mortgages. So if you have any questions for David, do, you don't have to ask us any questions because we, <laughs> we don't know. Definitely gonna uh, if you have any questions for David, you can call Tim at the studio, 781 837 4900. And you can also text now. We're live on Facebook. So if you're a little shy and you want to uh, leave a comment on Facebook, be sure to follow Boston Connect Real Estate on Facebook. So, um, yeah. Okay. So reverse mortgages. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Continuing. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I'll say this too. A lot of people think that reverse mortgages are, are a last resort. Yep. So, and that's how they were marketed in the early 90s and mid 90s is if you're, if it's dark in your house because you've got the lights off and you're eating cat food, yep. now might be a good time to look into reverse mortgage. <laughs> yeah. And it was it was not marketed correctly. Yeah, it was like because, desperate. You're, you're... Well, if you're desperate. And so yeah. everybody has this thing in their head. I'll even meet with people sometimes and they say, yeah, we're, we're fine right now. We're not quite ready for that. But it, this this is actually a retirement planning tool. Yeah. No one knows that. Um, and so the, what I mean by that is if you think about what we talked about earlier, if you have a net worth of a million dollars, 500000 in IRAs and stock accounts and mutual funds, and you have $500,000 of equity in your house, mm -hmm. you get a million dollars net worth. So 
when you save up the 500,000, your intent when you get into your mid to late 60s is to start spending from it, right? Right. You yeah. set up well, a payment yeah. plan from it along with Social Security and pension and stuff like that. No one ever looks at the left side and says, how can I use Tap that 500,000? Yeah. Now I actually have a million to work with. So you can, the reverse mortgage is the only tool that allows you to keep your house and spend from it. The only way you can spend from a house typically is sell it, sell yeah. it, because then you get all your cash and you, but you got no house left. But you, yeah, you, now you have nowhere to live, yeah. and that's another part of it right now is that, even with the prices that are up there, that prices of houses are so high, but where you sell your house, where are you going to go? Right. Like where I'm going to take mm -hmm. the equity out of my house, and then go where right. to buy because the the prices are so high. Right. So even if you sell your house at a profit, you're what you're going to buy is twice what I would want to spend. Right. Like I might as well, we call it aging in place. Jim and I, that's our term yeah. is that we're aging in place right now. Yeah. Um, I mean, eventually we might move to Nashville to be closer to our daughter, but we're staying in our house because where am I going to go right now? Like right. If I'm going to buy a condo, it's going to be six or seven hundred thousand dollars. I mean, yeah, we might as well stay where we are. Fees. You might as well stay where you are. Plus the condo fees yeah. and everything else. And now that so. you have the pool, like, would you really want to move? No, no, <laughs> no. I'm aging in place is where we're staying. So, yeah. I mean, a reverse mortgage at some point down the line is probably not a bad idea yeah. for us. So a couple of strategies are this. is I have affluent clients, too. I have clients that have no cash flow problems, no mortgages. Mm -hmm nothing no problems at all and they put a reverse mortgage in place but we structured it the whole loan is a line of credit yeah. it's a reverse equity line of credit so we had no liens to pay off they ate the closing cost let it rolled into the the the, um, the house paid for that essentially the equity in the house but maybe gave them a four or five hundred thousand dollar line of credit on a million dollar house yeah now that's not spent but it's there it's there if you need it so you've got your portfolio money, and now this in place. Now, typically, people think a five hundred thousand dollar home equity line of credit mm -hmm. is inclusive too, because it's, I can spend from that. But when you spend from a home equity line of credit, you have a payment the very next month, the moment you spend from it. Yep. With a reverse equity line of credit, you can spend from it, and because it's borrowed money, there's no income tax consequences. So it's a strategy when you're looking to buy something in retirement, like say a car, mm -hmm. and you usually go to this pocket of money over here, you might have to take out more than what you're paying for the car because you gotta pay taxes on that. Now you have a new bucket, bucket of money where you can say, why don't we just take it from the reverse equity line of credit because we can just take out 30 grand, the yeah. cost of the car is 30. Yep. It's, a, it's borrowed money, so we don't pay taxes on you're that. You're not paying taxes. So those are strategies that some of my clients, my savvier clients are using it for. The other thing is, is when your, their portfolio crashes, and we all know stock markets do mm -hmm. this, right? Mm -hmm. Go up and down. Um, and you're drawing a payment from that. The worst thing you want to do is continue drawing a payment from that while it's going south. It yeah. digs a big hole to, it's tough to get out of. What they do is they stop drawing the payment from here, and they start drawing it from here and, while this recovers. Once this recovers and it starts going back up, they can stop drawing the payment from here and go back to here. Yep. And what that strategy has been proven to do by economists is it by having this in place and using it when the stock markets are down, mm -hmm. it made this portfolio last longer because, because you they can had another bucket sit. of money yeah. to use yeah. during instead yeah. of continuing to draw from they it. They can wait yeah. it out. It's called a buffer asset strategy. So there's so many different applications with this product, and most people just think it's yeah it's for a monthly payment. Yeah. And it, it can be just for a monthly payment. It can be, but... Um, but there's the applications just... That's why I'm so passionate about it because I can sit down with an affluent borrower and say... As long as you want to stay here long term, we can find an application. We can just set up a line of credit. Hey, if you never use it and you never have a use for it, right. great. It was there, though. Yep. And here's the secret sauce, really. And this is why I got in the business. When that line of credit sits there, let's say someone takes one out for 400000 it grows, always grows, income tax-free. Oh. And right now, the growth rate's at 7.5%. It's variable. Yeah, but so still. next year. If somebody told you you could get 7.5% on... Yeah. You'd take it. And it's not it's <laughs> not a liquid asset. So I don't want the listeners to think we're talking about a financial instrument, you know, like an IRA. It's equity. It's invisible. Yep. But this is the power of a reverse mortgage is once you put it in place, it's supercharged and hedged a portion of that home's equity. Not all of it, some of it, but that non recourse feature and that upfront insurance fee that was paid allows that line of credit to always grow. Even if the home value plummets after you take out the reverse mortgage, oh. 
it doesn't make the line of credit stop growing. That always grows. It's always there. It, it's the, it's that snapshot in time, and then and it's it always growing. Going. So if you had a four hundred thousand dollar line of credit at seven percent next year, it would be four hundred twenty eight thousand. So you'd see your monthly statement. You say, why did the line of credit rise from four hundred to four twenty eight? And that's because you're aging. Yeah. After you take it out, and the older you are, remember when you borrow it, you get more when you're older. Right. But if you take it out and you're older next year. It's the, that's the reason why the line of credit's increasing. increasing. So the limit is always going up. And so if you set up a $400,000 line of credit early in retirement mm -hmm. and let it sit there for 20 years, that 400000 can be approaching a million dollars for all we know. And then you've got this million dollar line of credit inside your house. Again, yep. you don't have to use it. Yep. But it could be used for in-home care. It could be used for a number of things. Anything down the road. Yeah. Yeah. A roof, a heating system. Anything. Anything. And so there's so many different applications with these things. It, this, it's such a versatile financial tool. Yeah. That's what I call it. I call it a tool because it's, it's not the only tool, but it's, I would say, anybody 62 or older that wants to stay in their home long term, they really do owe it to themselves to learn about it. And they can learn about it from me for free. Yeah. yeah. Just there's no cost mm -hmm. or obligation. Yeah. It's, we can't even do anything if they want to do something that day. I have, because HUD has a roadblock in place called counseling. So if, if you know, I meet with you and, yep. you know, you feel pressured by me, which you never would. I don't sell these things. Like <laughs> do, you see, do you see why you'd uh, be like, <laughs> no. you have to get this You're reverse mortgage. You listen to my today. show. That's right. <laughs> it's all about education. You yeah. got to educate folks and yeah. tell them what's the pros, what's the cons, what's the facts, what's the, what's the truth about this thing. And then you understand it. And then you make the decision to do it. But until then, nothing can happen for formally. You have to do a counseling class first with a neutral third party. Yep. And so that's a safe That says that you, yep, yeah. you do understand what you're... From someone yep. neutral. Yep. Dave does it yep. for a living, you know, supports his wife and daughter. Um, so we don't know if he has your interests, best yeah. interests in mind. But this, this neutral counselor was trained by HUD specifically. Okay. And so there's a number of agencies in Massachusetts that you'd call and say... I'm applying for reverse. I know I got to do this class, uh, a one on one, you know, mm -hmm. yep. right up front before I can proceed with the application. Mm -hmm. So it's a very transparent and safeguarded product because it's federally regulated. Yep. And yeah. And when they designed it with all of the 60s and 70s issues with those products, they wanted to get rid of those. So they did that by counseling. Definitely had a stigmatism yeah. to it. That's for sure. Is it stigmatism so. or stigma? stigma. Um, stigmatism is in your eyes, isn't it? No. It's stigmatism. That... I have a stigmatism is in it, my eye. I think is my wife does too. Yeah. It's like a little... Stigma. Is it stigma? I think it's just stigma, not stigmatism. <laughs> stigmatism. <laughs> we'll go like we'll Google one. it. I like both words. I do. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll Google the difference, but I think it's just stigma. <laughs> Unless right. stigma is short for stigmatism. <laughs> well, I don't maybe know. you have a stigma. Stigmatism. But it's a stigma that See how we can get this way? And we'll talk digress. for 45 minutes, That's an funny. hour about it. See, we talk about this for like... Oh, uh, yeah. You have to put some like, humor in this. Thing. Yeah, seriously. People are probably we're snoring fun. on the yeah, other end. Yeah, they're like, huh? Yeah, no, we have, we have quite a few people um, watching, even Jim Grady. Oh, Jim Jim's Grady, watching. the other half of the Grady, Grady team here at Boston Connection. He's yeah, sitting there with Edna. Edna. Oh, do you think the kids are up? Carl was pretty tired last night. My son and his girlfriend came in last night. They work... In DC, for the Secret Service. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> for the, shh, the Secret Service. They're so probably they watching watch, us. Right um, now, right? uh, maybe they might be up. I don't know. They both were pretty tired last night. Yeah. So, and Edna was at the do at their door this morning, crying, scratching at the door to try to get in at them so that she could yeah. get up on the bed. Sweet. And Colin's like, no, I'm no. not coming in. Like, okay. <laughs> oh come on! You say that now. Yeah. Oh my. God. Um. Okay. I have two scenarios. Okay. So say somebody takes out a reverse mortgage. They're fully intending on staying in their home. Uh, they're aging in place. Something happens. They need to leave. So they have to sell. And on the other part, what if they pass away and the you know the family has to take over and and it goes into an estate or something and it has to sell? What happens then? Good question. Yeah. So if someone takes a reverse on and wants to sell it, that's fine, mm. right? There's no penalty to get out of the loan, so they just sell it, and then they net out the difference and move on with the extra money, okay? And the proceeds. Okay. HUD will not allow a prepayment penalty, 
So typically you want to do these, take these out on long-term homes, but mm -hmm. if something comes up, yeah. you know, if someone takes it out and two years later they're diagnosed with something, mm -hmm. yeah. or their child lives down in You take a tumble and, and you need... And you just yeah. have to sell the house. To be so somewhere. That's fine. Well, that'd probably be my penalty. case scenario. So we're right now we're aging in place, but if one of our kids you know, has children, right. we would tend to want to move to be closer to the kids. And you can do that with so, a reverse. So okay. this, you can just sell it and, and net out the money and move on, just like if it was a regular mortgage on the house. The second part to your question is when a borrower um, takes out a reverse mortgage or a married couple, these loans are due when all of them no longer live there. Mm -hmm. So if one predeceases the other, nothing happens to the loan. It's when the last borrower passes away, the loan becomes due. And now the estate owns it mm -hmm. because the reverse doesn't dictate who owns it thereafter. Yeah. Your estate plan does, your will, your trust. Okay. Um, so they will then inherit the house through your estate. And they have time frames, though. If it's death, the last person passes away, the kids have to state their intent to the lender. And there's one of three things they can say. We plan on selling it. We all have our own house. Okay. Or I'd like to keep it. It has sentimental value. Or they can say, I'd like to keep it. I don't have the money to pay you off, but I'm applying for a mortgage right now in the amount that I owe you. So most cases, they're selling the house. Mm -hmm. In my 19 years, I've had two people keep it. And because the balance was so low. that Keep they just, it and move into it? or Keep, keep it or it either or... move into it or, or rent it. Okay. Because mm -hmm. okay. now they own it. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, but most kids, you know, think about my, the age of my client. Their average age is 71. So most of their kids have their own house. And yeah. sometimes they live out of state. Yeah. So they're looking at the money left in it. We yeah. sell it, we get some cash, right. and move on. So if they are selling it, it's six months from date of death of the last person that they get to sell it, not six months from the day they call them mm -hmm. after the death. So they get six months to sell it. If they close. Don't, yep, close. Yep. If they don't sell it within that six-month period of time, they can apply for two 90-day extensions up to 290 days. So you can get six months, 90 days, mm -hmm. 90 days for a total of a year. But um, it just, it's about communication at that point in time. So yeah. if they want to keep it because the balance is low, they can just make arrangements with the lender and say, the balance is only 50 grand. Mm -hmm. I'll just cut you a check and yeah. I'll keep the house. And then they make arrangements for doing that. So they have to do that in that time frame as well. If they, they, deci if they yeah. decide to keep it. If they keep it, they usually do it right away because yeah. don't forget just because the person passed away, the interest still accrues yeah. until the balance is paid off. So, so good question though. Yeah. If, so you'd want the, to get out. You'd, at that point, you'd want to sell the house and yeah. Yeah, pay if off If the they loan. didn't pass away and the last borrower was still alive but can no longer stay there mm -hmm. for mental faculties, mental capacity issues, and they go into a nursing home mm -hmm. full time. Mm -hmm. Once they're out of the house 12 consecutive months or longer, then the loan becomes due. So death is immediately with time yeah. frames. Yeah. If they're still alive but out of the house permanently and never going back, it's due after the 12th month mm -hmm. if they've been out of the house. Mm -hmm. If they fall down and break a hip and go into rehab for three months, but yep. they tend not coming back, that's fine. Yeah. It's just when they don't have terminal. to notify you. Right. They don't have to notify <laughs> you. <laughs> Hold on. We have to notify David. Right. <laughs> I'm going to be out of the house for like three months. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's, it's flexible in that regard. The key thing with reverse mortgages and the, all the horror stories we've all heard about is what happens is when the last person passes away, the estate doesn't communicate. Oh. They don't call the bank. They get yeah. letters and yeah. say, accept our condolences. Please call us. Let mm. us know what's going on, how you're paying the loan back. It's now due. Yeah. And then a year goes by. And they never called them. They yep. can't get in touch with anybody. The lender now goes to the to HUD and says, it's been 12 months. HUD says, go get the house. Okay. You uh -huh. can't keep letting interest accrue yeah. because they're on the hook for it. So it's just about communication. And yeah. with my clients, because I'm local and most of my business is in Massachusetts, I tell them that you give your kids my card, my, my business card. If something happens to you, say, call this guy. Yeah. And he'll give you guidance and tips yeah, on what to do. he'll tell you what to do. And yeah. I never had any problems with yeah. my, my, my clients that have passed away. Because I'm there for the family. After. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say that because, like, what if 
what if you didn't know that your parents are somebody that, you know, you're the next person in line? Like, what if you didn't know that they had a reverse mortgage? Because yeah. not everybody is like. No, they don't tell, no, they don't not tell their not, kids. Yeah, not everybody watching. is like so for like, oh, by the way, kids, yeah. we <laughs> have got a reverse mortgage. mortgage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you know, especially somebody who is so tight with their like personal finances. And, also, and if you're not close with your kids, you, that happens yeah, too. That happens we see too. that all the time. Yeah. And you that's know? mainly what yep. the stories you've heard about it is, you know, that. That kid finally didn't ever communicate with his parents. Mm -hmm. Finally gets that notification like 16 months after the death and says, auction is on next Thursday. Yeah. And, and what like, do they what? say? Oh, my mother had this reverse mortgage. Now what? look what's happening. We're getting screwed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you're not getting screwed. There was just no communication. And there's yeah. rules. Yeah. Every mortgage has a rule, yeah. right? If you skip three payments, what can happen? Every mortgage has a rule. Every mortgage has its own set of rules. Yeah. Yep. So they just, you know, you just have to know the rules. And they're not strict rules. They're just, they give you plenty of time to sell it. Yeah. Six months, three months, and three months. You get up to a year. Um, but it's about communication. The lenders, you guys know this, lenders don't want to own property. No. That yeah. They have a mortgage on. They like interest. That's what they're interested in is the interest. Yeah. But if rules aren't followed, they have to go get the property. So um, most of the stories we hear about are always debunked. A lot of people say, oh, 85-year-old in San Diego thrown right out the front door into the street because there was a reverse mortgage on the house. And when we go and investigate those stories, how can you lose your house if you don't have a payment on it? Yeah. Yeah. So, but you can lose a house with a reverse mortgage if you stop paying your property taxes. Oh. But the town would take the house too in that case. Yep. The yeah. town. They don't work out a yeah. deferral plan. Yep. So it's, it's, if you don't have a payment, you're never required to make one. You can't be foreclosed on with a reverse mortgage for that reason. But the headlines will state something along those lines and you'll say, hmm, so hmm. this must be bad. But when you go to investigate, you can find out the woman stopped paying her taxes for over a year. Yeah. Or the, the well, gentleman. Yeah. I mean, like I that. understand that the uh, the the headlines can get people, and that's how they sell, you know, and they make money. But, like, if, if it's backed by the government and if it's, like, regulated, like, why would it be a bad thing to talk about? Like, well, that's, that's you know exactly I mean? why I'm in the business. Yeah. I, I thought, well, I thought the same thing, but well, I, I read the HUD manual and the first, the first page was saying this loan mm -hmm. was enacted into law through Congress in 1987 by the Reagan administration. I said, well, would they really enact a product to hurt seniors? Yeah. Uh, a home mortgage. And at the federal level. I mean, right. we're talking. And so I said, that, that doesn't seem likely. I mean, none of us agree with everything our government does or yeah. says or whatever. Plus, a lot of them are um, seniors, right? So. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. That goes without right? saying. <laughs> and like I said, I've been doing this 19 years. Both sides like the product, Republican yeah. or Democrat. Yeah. No yeah. one ever gets in and it turns into a disaster because Republic, yeah. they like the product. They know it helps seniors. Seniors. The problem is they don't. they won't go on live television say, did you know that we developed a product for you 62 plus people? It's regulated by us, went through Congress. They don't advertise government products, so it just hasn't been marketed properly. And mm -hmm. it will go mainstream. Mm -hmm. I'm 57, the end of this month, and when I'm 62 and my generation 62, we're not gonna say well, these are bad. We're gonna go research it. Yep. We've mm -hmm. already researched mm -hmm. it. We already know people that have them. And yeah. I've had them for 15 yeah. or 20 What's to say? years. Yeah, the baby boomers. It's just that older generation, the 70s and the 80s, they still have that mindset where your equity in your house is a sacred cow. Yeah. yeah. Protect it at all <laughs> costs. Don't ever spend from yep. it. Get the mortgage paid yeah. down to zero. <clears throat> don't leave borrow it for against the kids. it. Yep. But the kids never want the house. They want the money in it. Yeah. Yeah, they don't want that. They think the kids want the house. They want the money in it. Yeah. So yeah, they, they can replace them, put a new kitchen in yeah. their house and go on yeah. vacation with their kids and, the, you know. Yeah. Yep. So they want the money. So it, it's going to go mainstream. And I'll just, I'll hit a couple of stats here that yep. are going to, it's going to force it to become a mainstream consideration. Um, this one right here, if you take just homes owned by 62 or older homeowners nationwide, just primary residences, mm -hmm. it's just under $13 trillion, trillion dollars of, of idle equity, meaning that that much equity just sitting there unused because they don't know about how to use it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is just one way to use it. I'm not saying that's the end all be all. And then you take and look at um, people 65 and older. 46% of the people nationwide are still carrying a mortgage in the retirement, age 65 plus. Oh, 46%. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So if, that, if you <laughs> have right. a mortgage payment and you're on fixed income and you're stuck with a mandatory payment obligation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at some point you want to get that off the, off the table. Yeah. You want to have extra cash flow. David, 
I have someone texting me asking you for your contact information. Okay. So if you could let everybody know how people can contact you. Okay. <laughs> how can people get in touch with you, David? How can people get in touch with you, David? The easiest way is, is probably a phone call just because it's – I can help you determine whether or not it's good for you or maybe it's just a simple question. But my number is 617-797-3277, 617-797-3277. Website is homesteadreversemortgages.com. And you can find me on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. Yeah. And we'll we'll right. put his contact information when we post the show. And then um, Susan and I will send that to you as well if you're listening. Um, but, um, okay, go ahead. Your stats. So. Yeah. So yeah. we have, all right. So we have just under $13 trillion. That's a huge That's asset. a huge amount of money. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and so people learned about this. And I don't, I don't, I'm not an advocate of being irresponsible with this. It's like if you got two-thirds of your wealth tied up in your house, learn about this. That's, that's a lot of wealth you're not considering. Mm-hmm. So you're not tapping it. into it You at might all. learn about it from me, and I might say it's not for you. I've done that before. Mm-hmm. I've yep. sat down with families mm-hmm. and said, I think a home equity line of credit's better for you because you're not sure you're staying in this house long term. So we'll get, go get a home equity line for 200 bucks, and then when you get to your long-term house, then consider a reverse mortgage on that house. Mm-hmm. So the next one is that if there's 12,000 people every single day turning age 65 for the next 10 years, every day. Wow. Turning age 65. And then people are living longer. It's, yeah. Right? I mean, so yep. if you take all these things and most of their wealth is in a house, at some point they're going to have to start learning about how to consider housing wealth. How can I, I tap I, into I'm that? I'm doing one when I'm 62. I'm doing a reverse mortgage when I'm 62, not because I'm in the business. Yep. But because, and I'll, I'll disclose this, I want to have my, my chase mortgage paid off by a reverse. But my strategy is going to be is maybe I'll still make my payments, even though I have a reverse mortgage of twenty three hundred bucks a month to chase. But if I get sick and my wife gets sick, I want to have a reverse Mm -hmm. mortgage because I can say, listen, we're not required to make payments on this one. Yep. But if I stay with Chase, it doesn't matter if I get sick. It's due the first of every month, and if I skip a few payments, they could take my house. So I like the flexibility and the safety. Of, of having a reverse mortgage where I can make payments in any amount at any time. Yep. Because that's the thing people don't understand. It doesn't require payments, but if you, you can make interest-only payments. You can make $10,000 a year payments, $100 a month. Never make a payment. A Still balloon make payment pay- in five yep. years. Yeah. The, the list goes on and on. The, pl- the payment terms are made up by you. But right. you're never required to make one, and most people don't make a payment. But if you come into money... And the balance is up here. And you say, hey, let's send some of that to the reverse mortgage. Yep. You can bring it down. Bring it down. And every time you send money back on a reverse mortgage, every dollar you sent back adds to your line of credit. So you could reborrow it. Okay. So that's another interesting mm. aspect of mm. it. So you got people living longer. And they want to be cared for in their house, too, in home care. Yep. So this could they be don't a want way to, leave. to pay for that. Yeah, they don't want to go to a nursing home or a, so, a facility. There's just so many different things leaning towards housing wealth being a consideration in the future. And a reverse mortgage is one of those tools. Tap, to tap into mm-hmm. it. Yeah, not it's... the only tool. I'm not here today selling this thing is the best thing since sliced bread. But I will say, if everyone knew what I knew, what we're talking about today, mm-hmm. um, I think I would be closing about 100 reverse mortgages a month mm-hmm. if everyone knew what I knew. Yeah. And I said, I'd be very busy. And I think it's going to go to that at some point in the future because the cat's out of the bag. It's not a scam. No, it's, it's not a scam. very transparent. Yep. Yeah. I've been doing, I have over, you know, 500 reverse mortgage clients, and none of them are in trouble. <laughs> none of them. Nothing has gone them, horribly wrong. I They're not them, out on the street. Nobody's come in, taking their house. No, for, I made them and their family fully understand what they did. Yep. Including the kids. Most of the time, the kids are there, too, and the kids give them their amen. You know, we think this is a good thing for you guys. You guys shouldn't just live paycheck to paycheck in yep. retirement. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Enjoy yourself a little bit. Yeah, enjoy Improve life. quality of life during yeah. retirement. Don't I'm be loving abusive. this right now. I'm like, I'm seeing myself <laughs> like at 60. Reverse like, mortgage. <laughs> I'm seeing a reverse mortgage in your future. <laughs> <laughs> Here, you can have David's card. Yeah, I'm taking David's, David's card. card. <laughs> Taking David's card. No Take question David's about card. that. Um, any more stats? We have a couple, like, I want to yeah. give, like, fire, fire, fire ra- rapid fire, fire questions. questions. Ooh, okay. Um, Favorite color. Will <laughs> I still own my home with a reverse mortgage? Of course. It's of a, course. Let me just elaborate on that real quick. Mm-hmm. You have a mortgage, right? I yes. have a mortgage. Yeah. This is just a mortgage, too. Yeah. The process is exactly the same. Yeah. You take it out by 
applying for it, qualifying for it, an appraisal's done, and yeah. the closing's done, and the title is in your name. Yes. Yeah. It's like when we took um, our real estate class. At, did you take it with Charlie? I did. Okay, so yep. the, one of the first questions he asks you when you go for your real estate uh, course, he says, if you take out a mortgage on your house, who owns your house? You or the bank? And everyone was like, um, oh. the bank, duh, the bank. And we're like, no, you own the house. You just owe money on the house. That's yeah. right. You own the house. Anyways, so yes, you Borrow still art. you still own your house. Um, uh, how does a reverse mortgage impact estate planning? Um, it doesn't really, but if you're going to do something like an irrevocable trust, mm -hmm. you have to have that reviewed yeah. because there's certain language that has to meet HUD guidelines. But irrevocable trusts, I have many clients that have those mm -hmm. and have a reverse mortgage. Yeah. Revocable trust is just a probate play. Mm -hmm. So they want to avoid probate wills and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. The reverse mortgage has nothing to do with how your house is transferred, though. Yeah. It's just the yeah. mortgage. Yeah, the just estate plan that you have in place dictates that. Dictates it. Yeah. Yep. What are the costs associated with a reverse mortgage? They're very expensive. I'll be right up front with mm -hmm. that. And that is that upfront insurance fee, which is equal to two percent of the home's value. So if you got a five hundred thousand dollar house, that's ten grand. Mm -hmm. And then you got an origination fee, which is typically six grand, so we're up to sixteen. Mm -hmm. And then you got the re refinance cost, the attorney to do the closing. So you could be upwards to. 20 grand. 20 grand. But the value of the house determines the costs. You can have costs as high as 30 grand if you get a million dollar house because 2% of a million is more than 2% of 500. But the good news with that, Melissa, is mm -hmm. the costs are mm -hmm. rolled into the loan. Mm -hmm. So the house absorbs those costs. And if you stay in there long term, that's how you talk about justifying those high costs. If yeah. I'm staying here long term and the house just paid for it, well, yeah. my uh, house value goes up. Won't that cover the cost down the road? My house value goes up on paper. So. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, in my head when you were explaining that, I'm like, okay, yeah, it is expensive to do it, but, like, look what you get in, right. like, after doing it. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh, like, I think look it's... at your line of credit or your, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Well worth it. Um, how do I find a reputable reverse mortgage lender? Oh, I think we have one. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll be honest. I'm not here today for an endorsement. Yeah. This is just education, and that's what I consider myself, a local certified educator. But I would say anybody listening, they should just seek out a certified reverse mortgage professional that's local to them. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to even be me, um, but they can. That's the best. We're the gold standard because there's a code of ethics policy yeah. you sign every year. Yeah. We'll get into all the all the um, criteria. The legalities. But just get mm -hmm. educated and get educated face to face, and don't do these long distance. Work with someone face to face in your state. Mm. In other words, don't answer a call in yeah. Oklahoma. That's so ex that's Do the so long distance. Too yeah. many variables. Work yep. with someone close different by. States. So different states. Different states, different, different rules? Nope. Same rules nationwide. Government, it's, federal. it's federally Government. regulated, yeah. Yep. Uh, states can chime in with their own little quirky things, but they're not going to change what HUD's. The basis uh, of the product. Yeah, the intricacies itself. of yep. the product. Yeah. yeah. Um, what happens if the home's value declines below the loan balance? That's the non-recourse feature, that expensive fee we just talked about. Mm -hmm. That fee is payable to FHA, sits in a fund. Everybody contributes to that. It's like insurance. If the loan is more than the mm -hmm. house value when it mm -hmm. sells, when the kids mm -hmm. go to sell it, FHA will make the lender whole out of that fund that that fee went into. Mm -hmm. So they'll pay them behind the scenes through an insurance claim. They won't go to the estate and say, Hey, the house sold for five hundred. Yeah. The reverse mortgage balance was fit five fifty. Yeah. We want the fifty. Yeah. If they walk away. There's no money coming to them because it's upside down. But there's no but deficiency they judgment mm -hmm. following them on their credit report yeah. for having an, a house go through the estate mm -hmm. as a short sale. Well, I, and what about if you know somebody goes to get a reverse mortgage, but like they haven't been taking care of their house at all? Like they're they're. How do you find the value? Like. How do you find the value of the house? Like, do you actually go and see it or what? Oh, yeah, just an appraisal. Yeah, an okay, so an appraisal. Yeah. yeah, so an appraisal. So it has to have an appraisal. Oh, okay. okay, good. Because I was like, uh, you know, what does somebody <clears throat> call you up and say, yeah, my, my house is worth a million dollars. Give me a reverse mortgage. No. Like, no, so someone's going to come out and. So does FHA rules apply? Yeah. So you're going to have a, you're going to have an FHA. Chipping paint. Chipping paint. Yeah. rails. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Safety hazards. All those. So yep. I, that's why I like to go out to the house. A separate appraiser goes. Initially, yeah. when I go out, I'll walk around. I'm not an appraiser, but I know exactly what they're looking for. So if <laughs> I see do. some things yeah. like that is a handrail and going down the stairs, I'm going to say we're going to need to install a handrail yeah. before the appraiser comes. So, yeah. yeah, rot on the deck, chipping yep. paint, yeah, missing, boards, you know, shingles, all that roof. stuff. Yep. 
Um, how is the interest rate on a reverse mortgage determined? Yeah, so most of them that are taken out run off a of variable rate, very much like a home equity line, monthly variable rates. So it can adjust up or down, okay? okay. And so those are called open-ended reverse mortgages. Right now, they're running around 7.5%. And are you mm -hmm. locked in at that 7.5%? No, it's variable. It is variable, so, so it does go up and down. Just I like a home that. equity. You don't have a mortgage payment. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You I don't have you. a mortgage payment, though, when it goes up and down. You would if a rate went up on a variable mortgage and you were making a payment. This one would just mean more interest would be accruing because you have a higher rate right, yeah. on what you borrow. Okay. Um, how does a reverse mortgage impact Medicaid eligibility? I'm not an attorney. Okay. But I will. I know some. <laughs> Preface this. I, I know some. Yeah, and that should be an LLR attorney question. Mm -hmm. But um, if you are on, say, food stamps or something that they're qualifying you mass health. Yeah based on your income yeah. and what you have in savings. Um, you This won't have any impact. However, you are taking out a loan and once you take payments from the loan and it lands in a checking account yeah. and you're being uh, qualified annually, yeah. you have to manage that. Yeah. And I know the asset amount that you can have is no more than two grand to your name yeah. every month to month to month to month. Yeah. So you have to spend down before the first of every month below that 2000 so that that's a it's a tricky question but mm -hmm. you can have a reverse mortgage and still maintain your benefits yeah. but you have to manage how you're using the money from the reverse mortgage yeah so it's not showing up and disqualifying you. and that's just medicaid medicaid not medicare medicaid medicaid, medicaid. that's a yeah yep. that's a aid medicare is care. sort of what we pay into and we're going to get that when we reach a certain age somebody told me actually it was Jim, said that it's the difference between the two is if you have Medicare, yeah. means you cared to work. And if you had <laughs> Medicaid, you need aid. This is how you distinguish right. between uh, the product. Yeah, uh, so aid. if you have Medicare, means you cared enough to work. It's a work. means tested product. Yeah. So it's yep. based on what your means are yeah. and what you will qualify for. Exactly. Things like food yep. stamps and yeah. Um, um, only a couple minutes left. My last question is, can I use a reverse mortgage to purchase a second home? No, but but, but. you can't take it out on the second home, yeah. but you could take a, a reverse mortgage out on your primary house mm -hmm. that's loaded with equity. Yeah. And let's say you wanted to buy a $250,000 condo in South Carolina. Yeah. So you could take out, say, a $400,000 reverse mortgage Or in here. Nashville. Or Nashville. That's and, what I'm thinking. And buy mm. the condo cash from mm -hmm. your line of credit on your primary mm -hmm. home up here. Now you have two mortgages without mortgage payments. Yeah. Because you took the reverse out of the primary. doesn't have a mortgage payment. I love this. You took Tracy's the cash getting out. The <laughs> and you bought the house cash with the yeah. equity from your yeah. primary. Yep. Now you get two homes with no yeah. mortgage payment. Yeah, with no mortgage payment. Still have to yeah. pay. The, here's a key thing. Yeah. Borrowers are responsible for paying the property taxes on time, yep. mm -hmm. maintaining homeowner mm -hmm. insurance, condo fees if it's yeah. a condo. Yep. Property charges are the responsibility of the borrower. It's yeah. important to know that. When I say there's no payments, you still have to pay your water bill. Yeah. You still have to pay property taxes. But if you can get insurance. rid of your mortgage payment. Principal and interest payment. Yeah. Right. That's what you're relieved yeah. of is the okay. principal, and por principal and interest portion of the payment. Mm -hmm. But taxes and insurance become their responsibility. Yeah. But there's still savings there because yeah. principal and interest makes up yeah. a larger portion than the escrows yeah. right now. Yeah. Although right my now. escrows... Yeah. Pretty up there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, before we do our final thoughts, again, give your contact information out for anybody who's listening and want to get in contact with you to get a reverse mortgage. Yeah. So again, David Tortolot, 617-797-3277, 617-797-3277, homesteadreversemortgages.com. That's plural, homesteadreversemortgages.com. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Uh, you email. do commercials on WATD. <laughs> you can on find WATD. You guys are nice enough to have me here periodically, so I sincerely appreciate that. Oh, we appreciate oh, you coming. Please, that was yeah. I, I've learned so much today. <laughs> <laughs> and Tracy, <laughs> if somebody wants to look at houses or thinking about selling their house, how can they get in contact with you? You can reach me at 617-620-8484. You can reach Jim at 617-842-4019. Or Tracy at BostonConnect.com or Jim at BostonConnect.com. 
Well, perfect. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me today. This was so fun. Was fun. You, it was it's fun. It was fun. I mean, we always have fun. We always have fun. Always we always have fun. Have fun. Yeah, no. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys coming on. And hopefully everybody uh, is contacting you guys as soon as the show ends. So. Absolutely. <laughs> phones are going to be ringing, yeah, off, the ringing off the hook. Yeah, phones are ringing off the hook. Ringing off the hook. Happy St. <laughs> Patrick's you so, Day. Yes, oh, yeah. happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. And Sharon and I will be back on Tuesday uh, live at 6.15 to 7. Um, so we'll see you then. Awesome. Bye. Bye. The neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Rips along. Could you be mine? I have always oh, wanted to have a neighbor. Thank you. Nice like meeting you, Tracy. Nice to meet you too. I've always wanted to. You may have to. Oh, thank you.